CrafteCards.ca and welcome to this video. So usually I do a lot of crafty cards and albums. Today I'm going to do something different. I'm going to share with you a couple different albums that I have made. Some basically bullet planners and basically a year calendar that I've done in the past. And I just want to talk about what I've done and some changes I've made. So to start out, I'm going to show you the planner I made a little while ago. I made this all from Photoshop and MS Word. I used some die cut images and stuff and I also used my cinch to bind it and I really like the look of it. Unfortunately, I really didn't use it. I spent all this time making these beautiful layouts and this is all for the calendar year and as you can see, it's pretty empty. I didn't really use it and I've pretty much learned from why I didn't use this layout but I'm just going to continue to show you this book. So I took some of my favorite scrapbooking paper, I laminated it, I created tabs, and I used it as a divider. I really like how that looks. And then I put in some plain paper to write things. Some of the notes that I had in here I've actually already taken out and I'm going to transfer it to my new one. This also is another divider. Again, another note section. Some of these, like I said, I had use these sections, these note pages. And then in the back here, I just have some information about my kits and stuff. And as you can see, there's another cute divider I made up. And then again, more notes. Clearly, I really needed more plain space than kind of designated space. And as much as I love it, like this is gorgeous. I love the colors. I love the tabs. I love the inside and everything, but the actual planner part, I did not really use. So this was a couple years ago. Now last year, I went to Michael's and I saw this beautiful album. I really liked the, basically the cover on here. So of course I bought it and I barely used it. I was all excited in the first month and I did some stamping and I started to put some things in. But if you kind of flip through quickly, you'll see maybe one or two little notes on the side. And other than that, I didn't use it. So part of the reason why I didn't use it is one, I, like most people, love to use my phone, the calendar in my phone, it's got alarms. Basically, it rings so I don't miss anything and it keep, keeps me up to date. But I have so many other things. I've got all these different notebooks that keep track of this thing or that thing. And then one day I was watching a video on YouTube and the YouTube channel is How To ADHD. And basically she talks about the bullet planner. And it was really interesting. It was actually designed by somebody who has ADHD. And it kind of talks about how a lot of people, they don't like the structure of planners. It's like you see a page and it says January. And I mean, if you don't use it in January, it's kind of a waste. And basically, People want structure, but they don't want to be stuck in it completely. So what he designed up was a bullet planner. So this is the new planner I've made, and I'm just going to show you this. Again, I've used my cinch to bind it. I've used a fairly plain cover because I want to be worried about the inside more than the outside. I have literally photoshopped and used MS Word for this entire project. I've used a lot of free printables I found as well as I made a lot of my own sheets. So I've used the cinch here to bind it, which I really like it. I've used the coil one so that I can undo it and add sheets if I wish. That's one thing I hate about planners is if you mess up a page, you can't just insert a page. So what do you do? You either, you know, scratch out what you've made a mistake on or you rip out the whole page and that kind of drives me nuts. So I thought, well, I'll do it in this coil version that I can basically twist it out, add some pages, and this will be really great for the next year in 2019 when I wanna keep some of the information from here and add it to the next year's planner. So to go inside the planner now here, I've used, this is basically just a piece of pattern paper and I've just laminated it for some durability. I found this really great image of this 2018 calendar, so I basically blew this up and I put it in here. Now on the back, one of the things that's really great about a bullet planner is to have a key. So here is my key and I've just kind of 
put a little banner I've done some fancy fonts here and a couple little images but as you can see it is pretty plain other than the little bit of color and that was a mistake I figured out from the first book well I loved all of this when I started to write in my colored pen because I wanted to use my colored pen I couldn't see anything that there was so much color on the page that I really couldn't focus on what I was writing about and then reading about so what I've done is I've made most of my pages black and white and then my pens which I've actually written in here this is this part has been in pen this part I did all the fonts here are done in Photoshop. So I've got a task as a square, an event as a circle, an appointment as a triangle, which is pretty much common for bullet journals. Then I've got a dot for a note, a star for appointment, a question mark to research or questions, and inspiration and I. And then basically goes in, so you're going to take that box or that circle or that triangle for your events up here, and if it's started, you're going to do half a box or half a circle, and if it's completed, a full. If it is basically irrelevant, I'm going to cross a line through it. And if it's canceled, I'm going to exit out. And this will be really good because this can kind of show you if you are basically scheduling things that are really unimportant and basically irrelevant. You can learn from it through this journal. And you can see all the ones that have the cross out and say, well, maybe I'm not going to do that or maybe it's not worth my time. And then some of the best things about bullet journals is these here, into next month and then into future month. And I'm gonna show you those pages next. And then I've got just a little key here with so black is home and then I've got my little boy Wyatt there in orange my older boy Tyler in blue my grandma's care needs in pink and then I've got all my card making stuff here and then I've got fitness and water intake and food and all that so I really like that and again this is your key this is going to tell you what your symbols mean for the rest of your journal now what's so cool about a bullet journal is you've got these index pages and basically you are going to write so my first page page one I've got my 2018 calendar my page two is my key and then from page three to six is my index and so forth and as you can see you just keep doing a running total but here's the thing let's say on page 89 I want to add a create page I just use a comma here and put 89 or let's say I want to add another list page I just comma and add the page and that is why this works so good especially for people but with ADHD but I'm finding a lot of people who blog a lot of people who craft do this type of a journal because it is so flexible so these pages here are just a couple pages of index I'm leaving lots of room to be able to add things and then I'm going to get into what they call the future log so basically the future log is all the upcoming months in this year I have a nice section here and that's where those little arrows in the key came from into next month or into a future month so maybe I have something going on in February but I don't need to think about it in January I will put it into my future log here into February if I don't have something I need to worry about till say March I will add it into March and then here is the key at the end of this month before so let's say this thing in February I've got going on at the end of January I'm gonna look at my future log and I'm gonna add these things to my to-do list I really like this idea because you cannot forget anything and as long as you check your planner and use your future log and your index and all that you are not gonna miss a single thing so I basically got some of these little images off of the free printables and I use those as part of my future log so I've got that as a divider and I just kept it really simple and basically I made this page called create so again it's very simple it's got the banner up there it's got a really kind of cool font here and at the bottom I've just got this kind of little flourish thing and this is for me to draw this is to me to draw ideas or whatever I want this page is literally unlimited and this is what I found I used in this one was those planar pages and I could just kind of go to town and write things and then if it was of any significance I could go back to my index and say you know this page is all about my ideas about maybe making this type of card or whatnot and then it's in the index and I won't lose it 
So now going on to the next few pages, this is what my calendar spread will look at. First of all, most planners have monthly, weekly, and daily. And I find I don't use pretty much most of it. This is what I use. I have a nice month. I've just started to write things in. This is so new. I just only bound it yesterday, so I don't really have a lot in here that I've written. But I've got basically in blue, my son here has swimming these days at school, so I've already written that in. Basically, that is his schedule there. And I've got that. So the month looks like the month. But then over here, I've made this really cool page. And, a, and again, with the bullet journal, you're going to see a lot of the dotted or gridded. And this will help you write as big or as little as you want. So I've just created it with a plain banner and four plain boxes. There is no to-do list in here. There's no groceries or budget or whatever. At the time, I can pretty much choose which I want to use. And I think for me, that is just super smart because again, I didn't use it when it was labeled. So by doing this, this is going to basically open me up that if I even want to just doodle in here, it, you know what, I'm not going to feel like, oh, I have to put, you know, groceries in here. So this is what I love about keeping this so open. And again, I use Photoshop for all these. So maybe down the road, I decide that I want a to-do list in here. All I do is change up this page, reprint it, or I can just use it and make the changes into the following year. So basically through here is all the way till the end of December. And then as a break, I have another create page. And then I'm going to go into what they call the habit tracker. So right here, I've got January. I've got basically a one page. It's all my pages look the same other than the bottom. It will say the month. So that's January you see there. And then I've got May looks exactly the same. March looks quite the same. And all I've done is print one and place the month on the bottom. So here you can, you can basically track. Let's say, so I have had, as you can see, this is day five of a migraine. So basically I'm just logging which days I've had the migraine and for how long. This will help me later. But you can log maybe your fitness, drinking what, how many glasses of water. You can basically log whatever you want. I didn't want to overwhelm myself with too many lines. So I basically made this part here in Excel and then I moved it over into Photoshop. So that's how I got this box. And this is what you use the habit tracker, tracker for. So if I kind of go past my habit tracker, and again, this is part of my monthly planner, if you will, or weekly. I've kind of combined them. And basically what I wanted to make was just a simple, these are all my to-do list pages. They're all the same. They've got a checkbox to say whether it's done, a line for the date, and then a longer line to explain what I'm doing. So instead of being tied to a daily or a weekly planner that I might not use, I simply just write the date here, I write what I'm going, and as I do it and complete it, I can cross it off and check it off, and it just goes from there on. And in the meantime, if I want to doodle on these pages or color them up, I can do that. If you actually do a search on Pinterest for bullet planners or bullet journals, the amount of coloring is crazy and I just wanted to print it out black and white again keeping the color to the minimum so basically my accents would add the color. So now going into the next part I added another different divider here it's just a slightly darker shade. I added a few coloring sheets now I'm not a really big colorer but a couple of these images caught my eye and I thought you know what why don't I put them in and just see if I use them. I, again I'm not a big colorer I do like the Copics in that but I find that sometimes if I'm kind of bored I do like to kind of scribble or doodle so I thought okay I'm going to have a little section here and I didn't do a couple I didn't do too many pages, but I did this one here I found, and then I found a few of these free printables. I printed those three on the page. I, I found that there were so many places to color on these. I didn't want to get overwhelmed, so I just made them a little bit smaller and kept them to one page. Really like this quote here, believe you can and you will, and I, I thought these were a little bit more less stressful looking to color, and some of the images to color in in these coloring sheets are 
pretty elaborate and it kind of overwhelmed me. I thought something like this would be more fun to do. So a couple really unique pages I saw people add to their own kind of bullet journals was they had a page for a wish list. So they could just write simple things that are either goals or things that they want for themselves. I found again some of these cute little banners. So I basically again photoshopped them into my journal. And this was another thing I saw. A lot of people had gratitude pages so that you could write things that you were thankful for. And I really liked this. So I added one of these pages. And again this is all done through Photoshop and MS Word. So here's another create page. I thought I would include quite a few of those just sporadically so that I would have places to just kind of doodle or whatever. And my son and I have started making a few homemade soaps. So I did a page just for kind of our recipes. And again, just left it fairly open and fairly blank. I've got another create page here. And then this is a page I made for my design team posts off of our challenge blog. I'm on a design team for a card challenge at Stamps and Fun Equal Creativity. And really like how I set this up. I have a little spot for the month so that I can write whatever the theme is and the due dates and that kind of idea. And I like this little quote here, all good things comes to those who craft. So I put that up there as well. So then I made a quick little list page because basically when I have some ideas I like to throw them down and onto a piece of paper and then of course I've got the check boxes. This is very similar to the other list but there's no spot for the date and I thought that was okay. So I made a couple pages there. Again I have another create page, a couple create pages there. And then I made this page for my card kits. So I've got a key in the bottom and that basically tells me okay I've made the card kit, I've filmed the card kit, I've edited the videos, I've posted them, I've sent them to the store to sell and whether they're sold out and basically I will keep track of my kits that way. So I've got that in there and then I've just got some pages for any things that I've sold. Sometimes I sell old craft supplies or I'm selling my kits or cards or whatnot and this is just kind of a good way to be able to keep track of those things. So I did a couple pages of those and then again as you can tell I really want to keep this fairly open so I don't feel too tied to anything specific. I just wrote crafty ideas here and I've got a couple of these columns for me to write whatever I want and again I can doodle on the side or along the back and then I have this page. This page is really great. This will be able to help me for my videos. Again filmed, edited and posted. This will help me keep track of which videos I've made, which ones I need to edit and then once I post them I've made these sheets for that and once I post them they're going to go into this other page I made for my video list. So under here I may have this page as my hauls and then I can just kind of keep track of what I've shown or perhaps maybe a storage video so I don't duplicate videos and that kind of idea. So I really like that page and I made quite a few of those and then I've got another divider. And then in the back comes some health stuff. So as I mentioned, I get quite a lot of migraines and they basically want me to kind of keep track of them. So I made this page and I've got this image up here of this girl basically holding her head, which basically has been me for the last four days. And then I've got one on periods, which a lot of girls will do to keep track of the dates you start and how long and any symptoms. And again, I've got that for the months there and then if I'm on any new meds trying to figure out what can help the migraines I have a couple pages that I can write there and then I also struggle with IBS so you know my doctor really wants me to basically keep tabs on that so I threw a couple pages in there. So that's that little section on health and then I've got the last divider being the darkest color and then all I have for the remainder of the book is basically they're all just plain pages. So they've got the dots, 
they're able to be written on nicely they've got the banners and that is it and I really like that because again this can open up let's say I want to continue something from another page again we go back to that index and we just add a comma if I go back to my index here basically if I want to add another gratitude page I just do comma and I add the page number so this is my bullet planner really really love this idea again I love that there is some structure to this but as you can see there's a lot of open spaces that you can basically name different boxes different categories and again I've added a little bit of pictures just to kind of you know be a little bit more playful but the bulk of my journal is you know black and white and that way my color pens can really add to the journal. Now about the pens, I talked a couple hauls ago about trying out some of these new PaperMate erasable pens. And basically I've decided in this planner I'm only gonna use these erasable pens because I really like the colors in them. They flow well, I have not had any problems with them. I had a lot of problems with the Frickson pens and basically if I didn't use them after maybe two or three weeks, they just literally stopped completely working and I had to throw them out. I have been very happy with these PaperMate pens. They come in, I've only seen them in these eight colors, but I'm fairly happy with these colors. Again, they've got purple, blue, orange, pink, black, a kind of teal color, a red color, and a green color. And then the other thing that I have in just this, this is just a pencil case that I believe I got from either Walmart or the dollar store a while ago. I've got a little metal ruler and that will help me make some lines if I need to basically make some other boxes. I can do that no problem. So I'm kind of going to keep this all together and I really think that this is a good idea. I talked about other videos where I had other books like this that I bought to do's and then I had another book I had another book over here where I wrote video ideas and the thing is as you can tell I was getting a lot of books and the thing is this is a lot to carry around and it's also very stressful so what I think is really great about these bullet journals is you can kind of have everything in one place you can still add your sticky notes and you can go to Michaels or whatnot and buy, buy planner stamps you can buy washi tape and colored pens and all of that type of thing to really make it your own one thing I'll just show here I got these a while ago this is from pink and Maine, and this is this little stamp set here and it's all about blogging and it's got brainstorming little stamps here and challenge and release and update and there's a little Twitter there and Facebook so I thought this was really cool and if I feel like I want to do some stamping then I can stamp in here no problem kind of why I laid everything out instead of just buying a plain notebook with just the dots is I did want some structure a lot of the bullet planners that are out there are literally just a book with dots and I thought that was just a little bit too time consuming for me I really needed this put out each month done for me ahead of time and you know all of my pages I really wanted printed out and right here but the beauty of it is I can still customize it with you know stamps and the pens and stickers and whatnot so I hope you found this video interesting I really will be interested in seeing how this goes again my planner didn't go so well last year even though I felt the one I made was just awesome and the one I bought from Michaels I did use parts of it but really I, I didn't use a lot of it so I'm really hoping that this can relate replace all of the notebooks and I'll be able to use this so thank you so much for joining me you can check me out on my website at kellyscards.ca you can subscribe for more videos and I hope everyone has a wonderful day